Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold technical and fundamental analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you. And if you're returning, an equally warm welcome back. And if you find my analysis useful every week, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share with your fellow trading colleagues. So if you're new, just a quick um, uh, introduction to my trade process. And what I do is I combine fundamental analysis alongside technical analysis uh, to really find the best trades uh, available. And um, what does that really look like in, uh, in reality? is uh, we use a fundamental analysis spreadsheet that identifies all major currency pairs and uh, look for convergence or divergence trades. So what does that mean? That really means divergence trades are looking for um, if strength is going to continue and weakness is going to continue or whether convergence trades, which are strength is likely to um, fade and weakness is actually going to, um, to subside. So we've got convergence trades. Um, as well. So uh, step number two, once we've established the uh, fundamentals and whether we want to be long or short currency pair using our fundamental analysis spreadsheet is use supply and demand zones, capture pain relief and stop hunt manipulation, technical strategies for trade entries, because it's really all about establishing um, a trade direction using value first and understand, identifying where the bargains are and then um, looking at the technicals for trade management and entries and profit targets. So let's get into the uh, fundamental and risk sentiment analysis and looking at the dollar. And the dollar is evolving from a haven into a must-have recovery plan. So um, there it is recently over the past year, recently, but over the past maybe uh, since maybe August last year, um, there has been a really a short dollar theme throughout the markets, and. Um, I think a lot of uh, traders that, that trade may be in the short term anyway a bit a bit played uh, overplayed and um, the dollar may start to pull back. This is where I talk about um, I talk about where you have convergence trades where a weak currency potentially may turn actually uh, strong in the short term or appreciate in the short term. And I think the dollar may do so. The dollar is due for a pullback, to be fair. Um, and again, everyone, can't, you know, prices don't go down forever. And um, so just quickly, the dollar has been um, has long been a safety trade for global investors. But post recessionary phases, with the help of fiscal aid, um, it can double as a bet on a global recovery. With that in mind, as capital flows to the US increase, so might the bid for the currency, much to the chagrin of traders who entered 2021 with overstretched short dollar positions. I'm still medium to long term bearish, you know, personally on the dollar, not um, financial advice, of course. But I think in the short term, if you're looking at price, which we will do uh, chart analysis, you can see on the dollar index, we have been, you know, in a bit of a major downtrend. So when you have major downtrends, you're looking at um, probably uh, some sort of pullback, an extended pullback um, to major zones. And we'll go over that um, in the technical analysis side. So um, economists see much to like in Biden's stimulus, even if imperfect. So Biden released his stimulus. So economists saw much to like about how President Joe Biden, uh, Joe Biden's 1.9 trillion stimulus plan will attack the pandemic and support the recovery, even if key elements may be inefficient or fail to provide long lasting relief. So um, again, just like everywhere else, really, when it comes to uh, you know, the economies and the recovery. Um, every economy really is introducing some sort of stimulus plan to really support the economies. So really nothing new. This is to be expected. But I think this probably will give the dollar some sort of short term um, uh, boost or the narrative is that it should give the dollar a short term boost um, and appreciate the currency. But I think overall, again, medium to long term uh, being on more short the dollar. And again, just some more sentiment on the US dollar. Dollar could gain strength from unrest. So there's been a lot of unrest as um, uh, the, the media has been reporting on. And uh, Sokjen's Jux is pretty much um, uh, 
uh, said that there could be some, uh, the dollar could benefit from that being a safe haven currency. So again, sh more short term uh, sentiment, potentially bullish for dollar um, or if you are looking for trend continuation, meaning, you know, short in the dollar, you're just looking at this as a pullback um, and areas to look for uh, uh, short trades technically um, on the dollar so you wouldn't necessarily be buying into dollar strength you'd look for maybe um, like I said some pullbacks into areas where you would like to potentially get short um, talking about uh, or moving over to the ECB and uh, talking about stimulus uh, ECB won't need extra stimulus to fight pandemic economists say so again as I was saying before everyone and every country really is battling with the uh, the virus, um, but I think with with, with Europe, um, or economists think anyway, that the European Central Bank won't need a boost to its monetary stimulus again to pull the euro economy out of its crisis, according to a Bloomberg survey, which could be uh, seen as bullish, more bullish for the euro, because if you don't need to, you know, add stimulus, then you're not devaluing your currency, therefore, um, unlike the uh, US uh, who are adding obviously extra stimulus. So there's a bit of maybe potential divergence there. Um, and uh, Christine Lagarde defends ECB economic outlook, even as banks cut forecasts. So I think one of the forecasts with projections for the economy GDP was uh, a rebound of 3.9% is still plausible. But um, again, with all the lockdowns going on, um, not so sure, but there are vaccine rollouts as well. So that is factoring into the uh, the forecast for um, a recovery. So the European Central Bank's latest projections for economic growth in the euro area is still uh, very clearly plausible despite the resurgent coronavirus and renewed lockdowns, President uh, Christine Lagarde said. So trying to um, really have a some sort of positive sentiment with regards to the European economy. Um, negative rates in the UK was uh, is 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 the rumor, so uh, which um, kind of came and, and got some cold water poured on it um, as soon as it kind of came out by um, the Bank of England governor Andrew Bailey. So negative rates worked abroad. Now it's Britain's turn. The Bank of England should look to experience. Um, look to ex, uh, experience sorry in Europe as it ponders its next step on monetary policy so there were calls for potential negative rates or at least a cut down to zero um, by some analysts and economists uh, but as soon as that idea was kind of put into the market uh, the pound uh, climbed as market pushes back on negative rate speculation. So it was again a bit of a buy the rumor, sell the fact. The rumor was starting that it could be negative interest rates, which would have been um, negative for the pound. But the pound rallied as traders pushed back expectations for when the Bank of England might cut borrowing costs to the end of the year after Governor Andrew Bailey said there were lots of issues with negative rates. So maybe not so much the fact that they're not going into negative rates just when they're going, not. Um, when they possibly may go into negative rates um, rather than sooner, well, later rather than sooner is the uh, expectation. So um, as soon as it's, they really start to um, uh, uh, potentially go into negative rates or you start to hear the rumour, then you, what will happen is, is that the, 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 the pound should um, actually decrease in value because rate cuts um, have the should have the effect of depreciating a currency. Uh, so sterling broke above the one point three six dollar gilt yields roads and money markets moved price uh, pricing for a ten basis point rate cut to December from August on Monday. So the comments by Bailey dampened speculation that a rate move to zero could come as soon as next month. So Goldman Sachs strategists had put those odds at four to one. So four to one twenty five percent. Um, but now, obviously, things have potentially, I say, they potentially changed. They have changed. Um, and the UK economy, some more um, uh, positive news for the UK. Uh, UK recession risk eases as GDP declines less than forecasts. But uh, within this, there is um, uh, that things will get harder. 
before they get better. So it's clear things will get uh, harder before they get better. And today's uh, figures highlight the scale and the challenge we face, Chancellor of the Exchequer Rishi Sunak said in a statement, but there are reasons to be hopeful. Our vaccine rollout is well underway. Um, I think the UK has been handling the uh, pandemic probably the one of the worst um, in the uh, G7, G8 countries. But um, it seems that the, uh, the pound, especially with Brexit being uh, sorted for now, pound has some positive sentiment around it also as well just from a global uh, perspective and global growth china ends up ends 2020 with record trade surplus as pandemic goods soar so china saw an export boom continue into december pushing the trade surplus to a record high in the month and bolstering what is already the world's best performing major economy so a risk on tone definitely when it comes to the global um, growth and uh, and uh, some optimism uh, when it comes to uh, again the global economy um, gold so gold slumped recently you saw gold's price action kind of drop drastically uh, gold slump on yields dollar fires warning uh, at everything rally so um, with some dollar potential dollar strength coming into the um, the market, some short term dollar strength that may also affect the um, uh, the price of gold. And I, but I honestly think that's again a short term thing. I think medium to long term, with all the money printing that has been going on um, with uh, central banks around the world and currency devaluation, um, gold again. The, 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 the the analysts and the medium to long term forecast for gold is still around two thousand dollars, two thousand one hundred dollars, etc. So that and money printing really isn't stopping anytime soon. Inflation um, is coming back in. You know, there's the the idea that inflation, with all the money printing, inflation should start to kick in. And what is inflation? Inflation really is currency devaluation. Um, so that should be also positive for gold in the medium to long term. So you could look at this as just buying opportunities uh, for gold by the dips, as they say. Uh, heading into the week ahead, so fourth quarter earnings seasons continue next week with companies such as IBM, Netflix, Intel and P&G, uh, Procter & Gamble reporting. That's more to do with um, obviously stocks elsewhere flash PMI surveys for the US UK eurozone Japan and Australia will be keenly watched while central banks in the euro area Japan China Malaysia Indonesia Canada Brazil and Turkey will be deciding on monetary policy so a busy week for the central bankers and again definitely listen to what these guys have to say or read what these guys have to say because if these guys start saying if central banks start saying um, uh, they're changing monetary policy adding stimulus or just continuing down the path off, then that gives us a good um, idea as to whether we should be, you know, long or short or um, any uh, currencies um, or a change in those uh, long or short positions. Uh, other key data to follow, including US building permits and housing starts and existing home sales, UK inflation data and retail uh, trade to Eurozone consumer confidence china fourth quarter figures and japan trade balance and inflation so pretty busy week for some countries now let's get to the um uh, technical analysis and starting off on the us dollar index and the us dollar index again we've seen this you know massive uh, downtrend uh you know over over the past um well since really march so um again the dollar is due a pullback it really is so in the short term you could see obviously prices start to come up to these areas here where you've got some um where you've got some supply here you've definitely got some supply around here as well in these areas and i really think i'd actually do like this area around here for um, any kind of confluence right where you've got a nice area you've got some consolidation or what traders would say you know I say I say as well accumulation phase of the uh, dollar or shorting the dollar and then you've got you know just kind of this drop here where um, I think this fresh area of supply if we're looking at the uh, as confluence within these um, using the US dollar um, index as confluence, right? 
and you want to get short, I think anything around here, if you start to see short trades um, or price start to sell off around that area there, I think that's a really nice area for some dollar um, uh, uh, selling trades. If you're looking at um, this area here, it's, it's okay as well because you never know, prices could you know move up to the upside for a little bit, but I really do un like the uh, the underside of this area um, as a as some dollar confluences for a uh, for a sell trade. If you're looking for a dollar buy trades, you're looking at demand zones. So demand there, and then there's a bit of demand right here. So you're looking for a bit of pullback into this area as well. Um, so uh, this 90 area before looking at any kind of long trades, and again, not long trades on the dollar index. You'd be looking for just confluence. Um, um, with this so you're looking for pullbacks and if you see start to see bullish price action at these areas then um, you're looking for any kind of dollar buying on the dollar crosses like the dollar um, dollar yen dollar cad dollar swiss etc so um, you've come up to a nicer supply zone a decent supply zone so if you do start to see some bearish price action here just use that as confluence but i do like this um this 91 92 uh price supply zone as you know the ultimate confluence for any kind of dollar short trades moving on to the dollar yen and the dollar yen uh we've got some demand prices have proven that there is definitely demand at this 102.50 area looking at any kind of supply so again uh, for any kind of uh uh, short confluences you're looking at that area there for supply and then you're looking at just a level a bit higher probably around here and then around here for short trades so again you can see price reacts off of this uh, this supply zone personally I'm not a fan of this currency pair um, you know the the, the yen is uh, uh, we're not really in a risk off we haven't got any really risk off sentiment or major risk off sentiment um, so for me I don't really like buying the, uh, the the Japanese yen in a risk with risk on uh, more risk on uh, coming into the market so if I was going to uh, get involved in this uh, currency pair it'd probably be to the upside um, looking for a pullback into this area here before looking at getting long. I think uh, prices do need to enter into a range at some point. You know, prices are, are, are trending or ranging, and we've been really trending for, for a while. So I think this fresh area of demand could be, if we get a pullback, that might be actually be a nice buy opportunity for the dollar in the short term. Moving on to the dollar Swiss, and the dollar Swiss has come up to this supply zone around here. So that level's been touched, you know, once already. Twice is okay, but not the best. Again, understanding where we are from a, um, a currency pair situation, I'm not the biggest fan of buying the um, the Swiss franc. Um, and uh, I think if I am going to get long, um, or if I'm going to get along on any of the uh, currency pairs as far as uh, either the Swiss franc or the dollar it's going to be the dollar um, in the short term I think the Swiss franc um, there was an article of the Swiss franc uh, talking about the central bank intervention is really um, at record levels over the past like eight years so um, they are desperately trying to devalue their currency uh, the Swiss National Bank so I think that may start to play out and I think the, the pullback into this zone I'm going to be very very interested in, in, in buying the dollar I'm not really a, a dollar um, bull but against um, some other currencies like maybe the yen or the Swiss franc that's definitely something I am interested in there's a level there and if we've actually we've made higher highs here so in fact that would be the first area to actually look towards sorry about that I should be just change that to demand so that area there is where I want to look for um, uh, buy trades and it's got the added um, confluence of support in that area support and resistance so you've got support there bit of support there daily support so if prices can come down into this area here into that support zone that for me is going to be the first area I might look for a buying opportunity to take advantage of some potential 
dollar, uh, short term dollar strength over the Swiss franc. Um, moving on to the dollar CAD, dollar CAD, we've got, um, I'll start off with supply, draw a couple of levels. So we've got some supply here. We've got a little bit of supply which didn't break, just wick, so um, that's decent. From a demand zone perspective, there is a bit of demand right there which is held so we're in this quite this tight range at the moment I, again with dollar strength potentially coming back into the market if we're looking at where we are from you know uh this this massive kind of downtrend you're you know you have to kind of expect some sort of dollar pullback at some point this actually was a decent area to look for that you know long trade if you are looking for long trades um but the canadian dollar may benefit from a strong commodity rally especially in oil so again if you are looking for more trend continuation plays i would probably wait for price to come up to somewhere within this zone here before looking at getting short if you're looking for any kind of long trades now if you're trading the daily if you're trading intraday you probably wait for a bit more of a pullback you know on maybe the four hour if you get a pullback into that zone before looking at getting long there moving on to the New Zealand dollar, US dollar. So this has been on an absolute rip roaring uh, trend. We haven't got any major supply um, or recent supply anyway, from apart from 2018. So I don't like putting supply from 2018. I'd rather let supply prove itself, strong supply prove itself um, uh, uh, recently before putting any kind of supply zones on there. But uh, from a demand perspective, there was demand there and that's broken now it did react you know in in the uh this week you can see where prices came down to that demand zone there reacted for for maybe about a few pips or so and then we've kind of broken down here but when you think about where we are in the trend um we're due a, a quite a large pullback anyway so i think this is going to be the first area to look for decent a decent pullback we've got staggered demand zones around here as well so any kind of pullbacks to this area especially i think this 70 cent area is really nice for a potential um uh, long trade um if you're looking at again taking advantage of maybe some short-term us dollar uh, strength then you've got supply right there and you've also got a supply zone here as we've made lower lows lower highs and uh looking at getting short hair or short hair so um decent i don't think the, the first level is necessarily the best i think that uh, 73 area is definitely seen as an expensive area now proven expensive zone so look towards uh, the highs i think for any kind of short trades if you can get a bit of a pullback um, into that area there in the me short to medium term um moving forward to the pound dollar and the pound dollar has a bit of an ugly chart to be fair we've got some demand wide areas of demand really and i think all of this area would be uh, demand not pretty but that's just the way it is but we break down these areas of demand with areas of support and resistance and support and resistance really is supply and demand zones um, that have been projected into the future so um, just a quick recap on that this actually was a supply zone right here when you look at where prices actually went came in came out that was a supply zone and that supply zone has been actually projected into the future right and it becomes what traders would term as support and resistance right so you've got a bit of resistance here resistance there yeah a bit of resistance then it becomes support there and there so um supply and demand is the really the uh the, the, the really the building blocks for all technical strategies in my opinion um and then you've got also another zone around here of of support as well so these are the daily zones that i would probably or daily prices that i would if i was looking to be a buyer this is where i would look within this wide area of demand to be a buyer either there or if prices do come down to here and here 
the reason why that is is not only do we identify you know value but we also identify where other traders will be looking to buy and sell you know uh, technically and this is where hopefully the most uh, there's more demand orders than supply orders at these levels at least from a technical analysis perspective so if you're getting long these are the areas if you are looking to get short by the US dollar then that area there is going to be a supply zone but it's by no not even close to being um, a strong area of uh, supply not even by a long shot you really want to see prices kind of you know come down uh, prove that there's value there and then maybe this starts to become a stronger area as prices start to fall but for now with just this you know this this area of supply here is not strong at all um, moving on to the euro dollar and the euro dollar is pulling back so if you're a trend trader what you are looking at is pullbacks to demand right so that's where you want to look for any kind of uh, long trade this zone here is a really really nice uh, zone and I've put out a video earlier during the week about why this area of demand is uh, is um, I think is a really good zone to look for and again when you have lots of uh, I say lots but when you have a massive uh, uh, trend with no real major pullback you should expect really a deeper pullback to some degree and around here is going to be fair value this 1.195 um, area i think is a really nice zone to look for any kind of pullbacks but if you're looking at a uh, demand zone this week and potential uh, for uh, this demand zone to work then that's actually quite a nice trade as well if you're looking for supply zones i.e buying the us dollar then you're looking at there and you're looking at the highs really here this is obviously clearly uh, a, a, either a bargain area for the us dollar or an expensive price for the euro dollar exchange rate so um this would be actually quite nice a nice short i do like that for a short technically but my bias is to the uh, long side as uh, i think that the long term um uh, price predictions were at 125 so 125 being somewhere just up here so um, let's see what happens with with the euro dollar moving on to the uh, euro yen and the euro yen I actually like this zone here for the uh, for a buy zone it's 12450 it's really nice for I think a buy trade for the euro and just below that as well if you're looking at, um, uh, and this would be more of again a risk on trade. If risk is off, the Japanese yen tends to strengthen. But uh, if you do want to be a buyer of the yen, you've got a supply zone there, and you've got a nice supply zone. I really like that supply zone uh, there. At the at the actual highs, the one two seven area. Technically, I do like that. Um, but my bias would be to the long side. So if prices do come down here to the uh, one two. 450 area that would be where I'm looking for any kind of buy trades again not uh, financial advice moving on to the Aussie dollar and the Aussie dollar again just been on this absolute tear since November um, no major pullbacks so uh, with risk on uh, sentiment fundamentally you've uh, really had it's been a really nice uh, trade um, buying the Australian dollar and just continuing to buy the Australian dollar but now we're looking for pullbacks within these uh, demand zones so let's see what happens price is being supported at the moment it did price did come back to this demand zone earlier in the week kind of went to the upside so there was some intraday trades to be had but I don't expect this to last for long maybe a deeper pullback as the dollar gets uh, stronger short term wise and then we look for uh, say then we but um, I'm probably going to be looking for any kind of long trades within that zone there that would be quite nice there is I don't think there's really any major areas of support and resistance within that zone but we'll see if there's anything locally that we can uh, that we can use for uh, confluences and using some other confluences uh, so let's uh, see what happens with that supply zone wise there is technically a supply zone here but again not necessarily the strongest area of supply if you're looking for a short trade at the moment on the uh, aussie dollar uh moving on to the australian yen and again the aussie yen 
being um, a, a barometer of risk sentiment and you can see when risk is on traders will pile into the Australian dollar when risk is off you'll see traders pile into the Japanese yen um, so at the moment we've seen this uh, you know, this trade really monster trade um, especially since November anyway um, last year risk on vaccine news etc all right so we've just seen a nice trend now waiting for a pullback so for anyone who's been waiting to jump in on this trade this aussie uh, yen trade like myself then there are areas here that we could look towards to look for any kind of buy trades um i do like this area around here this 78.50 area got some uh, support and resistance confluence and there's some other confluences as well that I'd be looking for um, not just a support and resistance so let's see what happens if prices can pull back from a supply zone meaning you're buying the um, Japanese yen I don't think that is really a strong area of supply at all until we start to um, you know really look uh, you know prices really take out a level of demand and really kind of come down and maybe even go beyond this area that's when I'd see there's going to be strong supply there but again you have to expect really a pullback a deeper pullback at some point um, probably into some sort of fair value if we're looking at fair value fair value is all the way down here so um, I do think around here is actually a really nice medium term um, zone as well so that area there, if this area, this area doesn't work out, the 78.50 or just below that, then 77 is actually a really nice area. Got a lot of confluence. I think, yeah, it's got nice confluence there as well. Do like that, that zone. Um, and finally, looking at gold and gold. Again, we've pulled back to this demand zone where you've got um, that area there, you've got an area here here you've got um, supply zone around here remember really that supply zone started from just before there so it was really all of this area here which is a level of supply um, and you can see where prices did react from that I do like this area as a as a potential buy but in the short term I think maybe if the dollar starts to you know gain in strength then we could see prices um, uh, the price of gold really kind of fall down to this 1780 and I think this is an absolute bargain for gold if prices do come down here then that is a really nice trade to the upside also as well there are situations where the dollar and gold will go up in tandem by the way it happened for pretty much a whole year if you look at you know 2019 gold right into 2020 2019 into 2020 yeah, you had a nice uptrend. Now, if you go to if you go back to the dollar index, yeah, and we look at 2019, yeah, if we look at 2019, which is here into 2020, yeah, what was the dollar doing as well? It was doing pretty much the same thing. Yes, we did have you know some pullbacks as well, but overall, we were you know on on an uptrend. So there are periods where gold and the dollar can do um, and do move uh, together um, they'd be probably being moved um, let's say probably but the dollar was being really moved to the upside I remember this um, because I was trading the dollar long um, as well and it was due to really the dollar being the best out of the worst uh, currencies the economy was growing under Donald Trump uh, Europe wasn't doing too well so the dollar was an overall buy um, in 2019-2020 um, but gold at the same time um, was obviously uh, there were there were there were risks. Central banks were buying gold as a hedge against inflation, money printing, etc. So there are correlations that tend to work um, out or decouple as well. So just because the dollar is going down or going up doesn't mean that gold must go down as well. You know you can have both um, uh, asset classes move in the same direction. So. Uh, let's uh, let's see what happens with that. But going back to uh, but go, going back to gold, I do think that the uh, that these these areas here are really nice for a potential buy. Um, if that doesn't work out, then 
I think the 17 area is a really nice, got some really nice upside potential um, if this uh, continues to move to the upside. Anyways, guys, uh, that's it for this week. Um, if you find my analysis useful, again, please don't forget to like, subscribe, share um, with your fellow colleagues. Definitely press that like button as it helps uh, the YouTube algorithm for my videos. And uh, until the next video, take care and have a great trading week.